Now, when I, I went to um, the Royal College of Music down in London, that was my first um, port of call, and in those days, it was very different from now, we had um, a grant system, um, so it's not like even the student loans that you get now, so basically it was, uh, you'd get paid, you know, like to, to, to go down to study. It's kind of like you have in Scotland still, but not like the tuition fees in England. So I was in England, studying in England, I still got a a grant uh, to go down and study down there and um, it was talked up it, it based on how much money your folks had and earned so it was talked up by um, them a wee bit and also um, um, I got a scholarship as well not much, wasn't much money but I got a wee scholarship which helped and um, I did some jobs as well to, to pay for all that. The facilities were, I mean it's a big old Victorian um, specially built music college so you know there's things like um, you know, huge big rooms that all had grand pianos in them and big massive concert hall and all that kind of stuff. And it, it, this was the um, kind of late 70s when I was there, so like even things the electronic stuff is still kind of nowhere near it is now. There was an electronic music studio, but it's still old school of tapes and um, splicing and all that kind of stuff as well that we had to use. Um, so uh, there was lots and lots of resources. There was always somewhere you could find to go and practice and um, find other rooms to, to work with other students. Um, after I did that, it's like a good bit later in the in the nineties, I did my my masters, but that was up at the what's now the Conservatory of Scotland, which was the, the academy then, and um, they had great facilities as well because that was a fairly newly spe specially built building down in Brentford Street in Glasgow. Um, so they had a you know, great recording studio set up and all that kind of stuff as well. So much more um, highly resourced and specific to purpose than what we've got here in some ways because we're a bit of a catch all in this college for lots of different kinds of courses. Well, it was it was very very tied in to the sort of I mean, it's a classical environment I was in the Royal College of Music, and it was very connected to that world. So, like the best musicians, for example, who played you know like uh, in this the college orchestra, for example, would often get to to deputise for like the big London orchestras if there was somebody was ill or that kind of stuff as well. And often there was a the, the star students each year would be kind of getting into all the big gigs. So it was really really connected in that sense. For me, in the, the, the sort of composition side of things, it was always slightly detached because they always sort of be, thought it would be a bit weird. And um, um, But there were still kind of lots of possibilities and the connections that you could use there and then as well. Um, I was, in the last year there, the, the sort of chairman of the composers group, so we had to, had to try and get visiting sort of star composers and stuff to come and talk to us at college and um, sort of make connections in that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of integrated, but um, didn't kind of automatically lead to like jobs from my point of view. Um, well, in my my year group, and you know, like, generally speaking, people would generally go on and, and get jobs in, in the industry um, of various types. Um, quite a lot of them are kind of world famous now, you know, big stars in, in this in that sort of sphere in the classical and the jazz world. So a lot of them are um, doing very well. I think I sort of touched on that earlier. I mean, I say it, that there probably really weren't any. Um, I made a conscious decision. My my training was as a kind of classical composer, which um, was sort of, sort of doing sort of avant-garde kind of contemporary music, really. And I had a choice really um, at the end of uh, college to to keep on doing that and pursuing that that sort of furrow in an ivory tower for years and years and being skin penniless. I didn't fancy that, and I've always loved pop music and played that as pop music and rock music as well. So. I made the decision to come back up to Glasgow and um, form a band, um, so I did that. So that was kind of a, a choice I made, but the college didn't really prepare me for for that as a kind of career type thing um, in terms of any business opportunities. I also had my skills that I'd, I'd get, um, gathered and learned when I was there, but um, in terms of kind of the business side of things, it wasn't, wasn't existing at all, and that was my choice to pursue a certain different direction when I left. Well, obviously, to work really hard is a good one, and, and put stuff in. And as I'm coming from the tutor's point, and the lecturer's point of view, you, know, you get your stuff done and, and, and on time is always a good thing to do. And I think to be as proactive and a positive team player as possible is exactly what um, what you should be trying to do. You don't kind of realise until you're maybe a bit older that actually that's it's that kind of attitude that kind of people give out that's the most important thing. I think it's the if you're kind of really uh, it's what you're like as a person in a way, and if you're a, a person that always says yes and can do things, is always willing to do things, that's the sort of thing that gets a lot of brownie points as well as being good academically and good at your instrument or whatever. So uh, I think it's really, really important to be um, seen 
um, as really helpful and really industrious and keen and enthusiastic. That's the most important thing.